Uh, hey what's up everyone welcome to YRR help and in this video I'm going to show you how to create an gRPC client that communicates with your gRPC server and in previous videos I have shown you how to use a GUI client to test your gRPC services and in this video we're going to write a Java program that talks to your gRPC server and calls particular API and get the response all right so what we also did in previous video is is that we created an uh, profile user uh, something like user service and inside that we have two APIs login and logout and we kind of generated stubs uh, for this profile using a plugin maven plugin and we have our uh, actual API implementation and we have our uh, gRPC server program uh, which starts our server. So, uh, let me start my server first, gRPC server, Java application. All right, as you can see, my server is starting at 9090. Now, uh, let me create a new gRPC project, uh, which is for uh, client. And I think I already have a project, just an empty uh, Maven project. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to pull all the dependencies uh, required for my gRPC. Uh, now, I'm going to go to my server code and I'm going to copy paste the dependencies. And uh, I'll provide a link for the entire code in the description so you can uh, pull out the code if you want. Alright, let me just copy all the dependencies. Uh, now, I'm going to create a new Java class. Uh, let me call it as uh, gRPC client. And I'm going to create a main method in that. So uh, what we're going to do is that first of all we have to create a channel that communicates with the uh, gRPC server and later we can talk to our uh, particular APIs. And for that gRPC provides an uh, API called uh, manage channel builder. So you can use this builder class to construct your uh, channel. And uh, we're going to use a method called for address and we have to specify our uh, IP and our port. And as you can see that my server is running at port 9090 and uh, it kind of has under builder methods uh, to customize your channel and if you look at that methods we have so many here you can just uh, try it out and uh, play around with these methods uh, the method which uh, we are interested in is this uh, use plain text and as per the documentation it says by default it uses uh, TLS for a secure channel communication uh, we don't really need that uh, we can just use plain text for uh, demo purpose so I'm gonna use uh, plain text and uh, finally we're going to say build now uh, what it returns is something like manage channel all right now that we have the channel created for uh, some support now the next thing is that obviously we have to call our particular APIs now here comes the tricky part when you are using uh, gRPC technology the thing is that you cannot just call so and so APIs um, directly in gRPC uh, what you need is something like stubs to call a particular API <coughs> and uh, how do we get these stubs we have to generate from protofiles right so if you are wondering what is a protofile so this is how a protofile looks like it kind of is a contract between server and client so we need this uh, profile now generally in real time uh, applications uh, what we do is that we create our profiles and um, we distribute to clients uh, whoever is uh, using and uh, the thing is that the client uh, in their respective technologies like java c sharp or c++ uh, they will generate the stubs from these profiles. I already have uh, stubs generated, uh, as you can see. So this, these are the stubs generated in my from the previous videos. Now, what I'm going to do is that for simplicity purpose, I'm just going to copy the generated stubs, and I'm going to paste it in my uh, client project. Now, uh, generally, as I said, uh, what we have, what you have to do is that you have to place your profile in a resource folder. And you have to use a plugin just like the way we did in, we did in server side. And uh, like this, something like this, we have to use the Maven plugin and it will automatically take care of generating uh, stubs for you. Now, I think there's some issue here. Uh, override issue, I think it's uh, something related to Java compiler. 
uh, I'm gonna change to 1.8 oops Okay, now that we have our stubs in our class path, what we can do is that we can use that uh, use a stub and we can call it some so APIs. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this uh, service name from the proto files and uh, we can say something like user uh, grpc class and you have to create a stub out of it. Now uh, there are three ways to create a stub. Uh, one is a blocking stub the future stub and the normal stub the difference is that uh, when you are using a new blocking stub it kind of makes an uh, synchronous call uh, meaning that when you send a request to the server a uh, client will wait for the server response and it won't proceed with further operations all right when you use normal stub like this new stub it kind of makes an asynchronous call uh, meaning that after sending the request client will proceed with its operations and it will capture the response whenever the server sends uh, using callbacks so that's the basic difference it's uh, asynchronous and asynchronous now there's something called a uh, future stub even i might explore this but for beginners you can just stick to uh, blocking stub for now all right and as a parameter uh, we have to pause the channel now as a response uh, what we are getting is the actual stub now if you don't know what exactly it returns you can just type something like string uh, user stub change return type to change type of all right so that's it so this is what it returns all right now the hardest part is done now it's straightforward from here on you can just use the stub and you can call the apis now, uh, if you go back to your uh, uh, proto files, you have two APIs, login and logout. So you can straight away call login. L login. And uh, as you can see in the proto files, uh, login kind of takes a uh, login request as an input. So we have to construct login request. And the way we construct an object is just like we did in the server. We have to use a builder class and uh, we can use this builder class to set our parameters. And if you don't know which parameters to set, uh, you can go back to your proto files and login request kind of takes uh, username and password. So I'm going to set username as ROM and, and I'm going to set password as ROM and finally I'm going to build build the class so I'll build the object now let me take the new object and pass it for the login API now uh, what it kind of returns is uh, again go to proto so uh, what it returns is something like API response again API response has a response message and response code now I'm going to go to my client code and I'm going to capture the response in uh, let's say response. So that's it. That's your uh, final response from the login API. Now let me just try to print it out. So that's pretty much it. Just the uh, four lines or five lines of code. Now uh, let me run this one and before running, make sure that your server is running on the specified port. Now my server is already running. Now I can run this in Java program. All right, we are getting response from uh, it's actually printing a success. If you look at our uh, API implementation, what we are doing is that we are checking, we are just comparing username and password and we are uh, setting response code as zero and message as success. Else we are returning some junk. Now uh, let me try that scenario as well. Let me just uh, send a different username now when i try to run again it should print some other message All right it's saying uh, invalid password which is exactly what we are returning here so that's pretty much about how to write an grpc client to communicate to server and, uh, currently we are just calling one single api now what we can do is that we can uh, even call our second api which is a uh, logout you, you can play around with this so that's uh, pretty much it so thanks for viewing guys if you like this video don't forget to subscribe us and stay tuned